Welcome to Shamba Shepa. We have traveled all over East Africa to find hard-working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need. So they can adapt and make their farms more productive even while the climate changes. We want to support them to get better yields and increase their income. We meet families and enter their kitchens to explore how to cook in cleaner, faster, cheaper ways while at the same time increasing family nutrition. We will see how farmers from across the region can benefit from our experts' advice while also learning from each other in so many ways. Join us on these journeys and share in the farmers' experience as they shape up their shambas on the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. We have traveled more than 9,000 kilometers to get here in Europe, Switzerland. Ah, oh, Switzerland, the land of pure fresh air and beautiful flowers. And we are about to meet our very hard working Swiss farmer. A tea? Yeah. <laughs> We are here with our farmer, Elizabeth Wairere. So, once again, welcome to Shamba Shape Up from Nakuru County. Yes, we are in Nakuru County, in Turi village, to be more precise. And Elizabeth Wairere, our farmer, takes care of her mother's five-acre shamba. And I must say, it looks beautiful. It's amazing. Since she was a tailor and converted to farming only four years ago, and it seems she never regretted her choice. Uh, in farming, it is free because you will decide for yourself and nobody who will come from outside disturbing you. It is not like tailoring because uh, when I was doing my tailoring, I was just staying there waiting for the customers. And I didn't know whether I will get a customer or not. But when I came in Shamba, I usually do my job without nobody disturbing me. So I'm happy. Elizabeth has 10 cows, 50 sheep, and some chicken. And out of her five acres, she's reserved three acres for maize. She also has potatoes and beans, but that's for the family's consumption. And for one year, she has put aside an acre for pyrethra. This looks amazing, Elizabeth. Very mm. nice. Yeah. You're just about to harvest? Yeah, good. It's ready. There's a mm. lot of good work done here. Okay, thank you. Now, I'm sure in every shamba there are challenges. Yeah. And you do have challenges. Yeah, I have. Uh, which, 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 Most which are Most of the challenges there? that I have are weeds, nematodes, and grapes. Mm -hmm. yeah. That is for the pyrethrum. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Fear yeah. not, for we have our experts coming in right here okay. to assist you. Okay. We, Micah. How are you? And How Nekesa? You? I'm good. Uh. Yes, I'm Nekesa good. and Micah, I'll leave you to it. <laughs> good to right? see you. Good right. to see you. I'll, I'll catch up thank with you Thank you, Caro. All right. Thank you, Caro. Bye, Elizabeth. Okay. All right. Okay. Our experts today are Mika Thuo of Kentegra, the company that buys the pyrethrum from the farmers, and Nekesa Wafula from Cropnuts, a soil testing company. The European Union and its bank, the EIB, provided funds to Cropnuts in this project. And the crop is pyrethrum, a once popular natural pesticide which is making a big comeback in Kenya and worldwide. The 80s and 90s, pyrethrum was the third highest earning crop in terms of exports after tea and coffee. So everything went south. We are back here to make sure it's back uh, on the farmer's fields. Back in the heyday of the crop, Elizabeth's mother had also joined the pyrethrum bandwagon. They were paying our school fees from the pyrethrum. I decided one day, one time, when I grow up and also planting the pyrethrum. So I didn't know that it will come back, but sooner or later, it came and meet me. So Elizabeth, yes. what did you do to get your pyrethrum looking this good? How did you start it off? After getting the pyrethrum from the Ketengra, they came and did the soil test for me so that I plant. Nakesa, why is a soil test important? If you're doing any crop production, it's very important to know the kind of nutrients that are available for your crop. So the first thing you need to do is undertake a soil test so that you know the nutrients that are available. Aha. And the other thing that uh, people don't know about the soil, issues about 
pH, that's the acidity, the level of acidity or alkalinity of the soil. So if you have such issues, then even if you apply fertilizer, it will never be uh, sufficient for your crop. So it's very important to undertake a soil test. As Nekesa went on to explain, CropNuts was able to use the EU funds to further develop its soil testing facility for pyrethrum. Together with Kentegra, they can now offer farmers more affordable soil tests and train them in best agronomic practices. The first process which is mandatory is soil testing. That is number one. We want to know what type of soils and what the soils are lacking. So with that, it forms a very good foundation mm. to start pyrethrum farming. Mm. We give them planting materials, that is seeds and seedlings. Mm. After that, we have agronomists on the ground that support farmers. They are able to teach them all agronomic practices. Mm. And this is happening in the highlands, Micah? Yes, uh, pyrethrum is an altitude crop. Mm -hmm. It grows in the highlands. 2,000 meters above sea level is the recommended and we have the specific highlands where pyrethrum grows very well. Pyrethrum does well in highlands such as Molo, Limuru or parts of Eldoret. What is the importance of pyrethrum? Pyrethrum is the number one organic product in the market. The most important thing uh, on the flower is the flower head mm -hmm. as we pick because this is where we find the pyrethrins. Mm -hmm. So once it's extracted and processed, it is used mm. to produce pesticides and insecticides. It had been replaced with what? It was replaced by synthetics, but due to the high global demand of pyrethrum, we cannot even satisfy the market with pyrethrum. Really? So that's why it's making a good comeback. There are issues about climate smart agriculture right now. There are issues about environment. People are becoming more sensitive to what they're using on their farm and even what they are consuming. So anything that is affecting you as a human being, you do not want it to go to the soil. You do not want it to go to your plants. So we have to now start farming in a way that is more climate smart. Uh, giving agronomy also advice that is more directed towards that side and helping farmers to actually increase their yields. Mm -hmm. So wh wh where is the market? Uh, the market is global. And the demand is huge. The demand is huge. That sounds so enticing. As Mika went on to explain, you can harvest up to 200 kilograms of pyrethrum per acre every month. Once dried, this weighs 50 kilograms. The dried pyrethrum is bought at 200 to 260 shillings per kilogram. If we take 200 shillings and multiply it by 50 kilograms, we are looking at um, let's see, no, 10,000 uh, uh, 10, shillings per acre. That's exactly 10,000 shillings per month from one acre. Not bad at all. But there are challenges. The challenges that I have are nematodes and the ribs. They keep on coming back. So when they are there, I don't produce more. So part of what we do at CropNuts uh, in terms of uh, soil testing is uh, nematode analysis because it's very important to know which type of nematodes is attacking the pyrethrum. Then we can provide recommendations for that. If you have nematodes, you can use a natural insecticide such as nimbacidin before you plant or while the crop is there. The other challenge that Elizabeth has talked about mm. Uh, is strips and that is quite seasonal. Mm. When it is very dry, mm. it's quite obvious you'll find a lot of uh, thrips on, on the farm. But we've been able mm. to advise farmers to get through the challenge that they are going through. Once the, the crop has bloomed, the farmer harvest every two weeks. Mm. Next steps will be for Elizabeth to ensure she dries this crop well. Mm. And I believe she has a solar dryer to be able to do that. Mm. If you dry it well, that is one of the parameters you get to get high pyrethrum content mm. from pyrethrum. Pyrethrum crops are grows actively for 10 months in a year. So the two months are basically for cutback and regeneration. So what we advise our farmers is just cut back all these stalks mm. so that the flower after the rains can regenerate well. Pyrethrum is a perennial crop. That means you only plant it once and it keeps growing. 10 months of growth, followed by two months of regrowth after it has been cut back. And of course, weeding is important. Mm -hmm. Weeding is very important because it really affects pie content. Just ensure your farm is clean at mm -hmm. any given mm -hmm. time. So what would make a farmer lose a whole crop? Uh, first of all, pyrethrum is a very hard crop. Once it establishes, 
it just needs the seasonal rains to be able to produce well. So unless there's a calamity like floods or extended drought, that could be the reason. You can be able to grow it besides any other crop. What we do discourage is intercropping because of competition for nutrients. Mm. Is it becoming popular here? Yeah, it is. So many farmers are growing it. Yeah. And I'm sure, Micah, you're very happy hearing that. Yes, I'm happy hearing that. Kenya used to produce 90% of the wild pyrethrum mm. in the 80s and 90s. Mm. Currently, we are producing only 4%. Oh, so you need to bring back all those percentages that were lost. We, we, we want to see the farms white. Okay, I'm, I'm hoping farmers will do that. I don't know about the other farmers, but Mika Thuo, our expert, is very happy with our farmers' pyrethrum. Looks fantastic. The European Union and its bank, the EIB, are supporting farmers for prosperous communities. I want to go big with py pyrethrum, even if it is 10 acres, 6, I will. Well done, Elizabeth. Elizabeth has 10 cows, and four of them give her 15 to 20 liters of milk a day, which is very little. And the challenges don't stop there. We need to find out what's happening here, so we asked our expert Fred Ochido from CKL Africa to help Elizabeth out. Surely, he has the answers. The problem that I have with my cows, mostly are ticks. Mm -hmm. Because if we, you escape one week without spraying, they are full of ticks. Mm -hmm. So you have to keep on spraying every week, every week. And you see you are using a lot of money. All right, is that the only problem? There are also worms, and these worms doesn't finish. Even if we deworm them, mm -hmm. they are not finished. Mm -hmm. So I don't know whether we are the one who doesn't know to measure. Do they, do they get cows? That is another problem because uh, we keep on waiting them to be on heat, but they stay for a long time. You see one, the cows have rough hair coat. The coat is changing in color. It's not black, it's now becoming brown. We can see from the calves, they have stunted growth. They are losing weight. And also the big cows, you can see the bottle jaw from this cow is very evident. Mm -hmm. So that points to you directly, there are problems of worms. Look at also the eyes, they are lacrimating. Yeah. You know calves need a lot of nutrients, especially proteins to grow. Yes. The good nutrients that the calves need to grow, the worms will take. They'll take the protein. The cows will not have protein to make milk and the bit of the energy that they get from the feeds. So that is why the production is very low yet. Genetics from these cows are very good. We are going to control the worms. And when we control the worms, the energy and the protein will be there for the cows to build their body reserves, okay. produce more milk mm -hmm. and for reproduction. Would yeah. it be better to keep your cows in the pen rather than them going out into the field to source for food and stuff like that? When they go outside to the field, they carry diseases, they come and infect other cows. But also those ticks, when they come here, again they lay eggs here and they make our environment where we keep the cows infected with ticks. The same thing happens with worms. They ingest the worms, the worms mature inside the body and they drop them off and they keep on multiplying. Mm -hmm. So it is important that we keep our cows inside. Once in a while, when we control ticks and worms, we can let them go in the field to again go and graze. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes, and please. if we deworm them like today, yeah. how long am I supposed to stay, to stay so that I can deworm next? We recommend that you deworm after three months. Okay. That is when worms are maturing okay. and they are laying their eggs, then we can already control them in the six to eight weeks. Okay. For the calves, uh -huh. we are going to deworm them every month. Okay. Once they start eating grass uh -huh. and they go to the pasture, okay. they collect the larva of worms from the pasture. Okay. And so we need to deworm them every month until six months okay. so that the worms do not interfere with the growth rate okay. and the nutrients that they need to grow fast. Okay. So to the worms, We'll use Nilsan okay. that targets the roundworms, mm -hmm. tapeworms, and the flukes. Okay. Again, it is dosed based on the weight of the cows. So okay. we'll have to take the weight. Mm -hmm. And maybe this was one of your problems, that you deworm, but again, at what weight? So it is good that we are going to take the weight today and you'll know how to deworm your cows based on the weight. Mm -hmm. So you take it below the shoulder and below the front legs. Okay. Then you estimate? It's approximately? 253 kilos. Ah. The top reading 
on the weighing band is for beef cows mm -hmm. and the lower reading is for dairy cows. So we'll take the lower reading. So we'll take the lower reading, which is 253. 253. When we use Nielsen Plus, mm -hmm. we take the weight of the cow, we divide by two, mm -hmm. and that will be the amount of drug to use. So in this case, about 126 mm -hmm. Yes, 126. Okay. Aha! Uh -huh. So now we know the culprit is grazing. It infests the cows with worms and ticks. Speaking of ticks, what do we do about them, Fred? Her first concern was uh, she's spraying every week. Yes. But still the cows come back with ticks. Mm -hmm. We will use a product called Triatix to spray all our animals. Mm -hmm. We'll spray them very early in the morning. We don't spray sick animals and cows that look very tired. Why is that? Normally when the drug is absorbed in the skin, mm -hmm. the cow might get tired and also they go graze in the sun. Okay. So we don't want to just subject the cows to a chemical that again will make them feeling a bit tired. And yeah. why in the morning, not in the evening? It is good to spray in the morning because when they go out, the ticks can drop off. So we can also observe if they came back with the ticks. All right. yeah. And also in the morning because the temperatures are a bit low, so it is very easy for the cows to fight with the, get the strength and work. Okay. So the ratio for triatics is 40 ml in 20 liters of water to be sprayed on your cows every two weeks. 20 liters will do four cows. Once Elizabeth follows our expert's advice, goodbye to worms and ticks. He loves me. He loves me not. He loves me. He loves me not. He loves ah, Caro, 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 me. stop it, stop it. This is not a regular flower. This is money. And if you're expecting answers from flowers, oh, you've got a problem. Tony, it's none of your business. There'll be more right after the break. He loves me. He loves me not. Welcome back to Shamba Shape Up. We are in Turi village in Akuru and we are visiting Elizabeth Wairari on our five acre shamba. We've learned about pyrethrum and its importance in the export market. We've also learned how to rid cows of parasites. We are now going to concentrate on her sheep and see if we can surprise Elizabeth with a gift. So, I'm going to remain with the sheep. They look so cute. And watch out. I am full of surprises. Elizabeth has 50 sheep, and just like her cows, they're not doing that well. Let's see what our expert Fred Ochido of CKL Africa has to say. He has solutions for the cows, so we have high hopes for the sheep too. It tells us again these uh, problems of ticks and again worms. Mm -hmm. But for the sheep, it's a bit different. Normally they'll tend to cough. Again, they remove a lot of mucus. Sometimes you'll see like cremation from the eyes. When you check the feces, you can see the segment of the worms. Mm -hmm. And that can tell you the heart is affected by worms. Mm -hmm. Again, you can detect diarrhea. That also is a symptom that indicates that there are worms in there, in your flock. I have been deworming, mm -hmm. but I didn't keep the record mm -hmm. that I am supposed to deworm maybe after three months or after two months. Mm -hmm. So I didn't, I didn't know how to deworm. Mm -hmm. They are also attacked by ticks, fleas, and even mites. Mm -hmm. They cause a lot of irritation in the skin. Some even lay eggs. So normally you'll find your flock is really scratching against objects. You find the lambs are losing weight because the fleas and the ticks and the mites are consuming blood from the sheep. And this is very dangerous because they become anemic, they might even die. So Fred. Yeah. What is the solution to this? Because our farmer wants to, to get good yield from the sheep. If you use one dewormer consistently, the worms will get resistance mm -hmm. and you'll not, whenever you use, you will not see any difference. Mm -hmm. So you need to keep on changing the compounds, the chemical compound in the dewormers mm -hmm. when you deworm after every three months. Mm -hmm. Again, for the lambs, you have to deworm them every month mm -hmm. so that you reduce the worm load in them that really affects their growth and weight gain. So Fred, yeah. what should our farmer do? So for the internal parasites, we, again, we realize that most of them are picked when the sheep go graze outside. Mm -hmm. 
So we recommend that you don't let your sheep so early in the morning when there is dew. Okay. So you let the sun rise a little bit. Yes. Then you can let them go into the field when okay. the lavas are dropping down into the soil. Okay. So you deworm them with nephluk mm -hmm. and uh, is 0 0.75 mils per 10 kg body weight. Mm -hmm. If your sheep is 30 kilos, mm -hmm. you're going to give them 2.5 mils okay. of nephluk mm -hmm. each sheep. Again, the regime of three months deworming because the worms take between six to eight weeks to mature. So we deworm them after every three months. Okay. With the external parasites, spray them every week. Mm -hmm. One, because they have a lot of wool, we have to make sure that the, the drug that we've mixed with water, the sheep is well soaked. Mm -hmm. And triatix is also good for control of ticks and also fleas. Eh? Mm -hmm. So you mix the drug 40 mils of the drug into a pump of 20 liters okay. and then you spray okay. your sheep okay. yeah fred went on to explain you need three liters of mixture per sheep so this 20 liter knapsack should cover six to seven sheep spray them early in the morning before you let them go to the field to graze but when the scratches goes down you can also tell that the the sheep are very clean of parasites that are affecting them for now, Elizabeth gives away the wool of her sheep to the shearers, as the quality of her merino is not marketable due to external parasites. She's also not making much money out of the meat, since her sheep are underweight, yet she still wants more. But at least now, she got expert advice and knows what to do. Sheep, there is no much work. So I can like to have more sheep, even if it is more than 100 so that I can make more money still, and from the wool, meat, and after gaining weight, maybe they reach 50 kg to 60, I can sell good money. Shamba, shamba, shepa. Shepa. Shamba, shepa. Ime badilisha kilimo, ime leta mabadiliko. Kilimo, 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 kilimo. Dio uti wa mgongo, inchi zote du. Shamba shepa, ime badilisha kilimo, ime leta mabadiliko, ime badilisha kilimo, ime leta mabadiliko. Na ishi maisha mazuri juu ya shamba, shamba langu, na ipenda, shamba langu, ina nilisha, shamba langu, shamba langu, juu ya shamba langu. Shamba langu inasomesha watoto Shamba langu juu ya shamba langu imenunua pikipiki Shamba langu juu ya shamba langu imenunua gari nzuri Shamba langu juu ya shamba langu imejenga nyumba ya kifahari Naishi maisha mazuri juu ya shamba Hey, hey, you at home, can you do it better than us? Join our Shamba Shape Up Dance Challenge. Send us your best dance on WhatsApp at 0748-153120 or tag Shamba Shape Up on your social media post. Hashtag Shamba Shape Up Dance Challenge. I had told you I have a surprise for Elizabeth. Here it is. I hope she likes it. Elizabeth. Yes, Tony. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Hello, Mama. Good, it's 
Welcome. Should I pull a chair? Yeah, yeah, All yeah. right. Yeah. This is a lovely home. Oh, thank you. Now, I've got a small gift for you. Uh -huh. But before I give it to you, uh -huh. I need to ask you a few, few things. Okay. Okay. Where do you get your farming information from? Farming information I usually get from my mom here. Really? Bro, yeah. She's that good? Yeah. She tells me how to plant, if it is pyrethrum, potatoes, and how to to manage it. Wonderful. Yeah. Well done, Mama. Good. And I we... usually also get it from broadcasting in TV, radios. All right. Okay. So now, do you, do you ever get information from your phone? <coughs> no, but mm. I, I wish I have. So are you a member of a certain uh, group called MCOPA? I am a member. That's awesome. Yeah. Because now I think my work here is almost done. But okay. first of all, I've got a gift for you. Look at oh. that. Look, just look at it first. Don't even touch it. Tell me what you think. Wow, this is from MCOPA. Now touch it. Wow. Look at it. Tell me what you think. Wow, now I'm done. Is this a good upgrade from yeah, what you is. have? Yeah, it is. Yes. Now, I will mm. do a good job. Mm -hmm. I, I can see, see you are smiling. Mama, mm. what do you think of this one? It's nice. Can you see? Yes. No, no. It looks good. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, Ne jaga. Ne jaga few, no? Yes. So with this one now, mm. it, this is a farmer's phone. Okay. And in there you'll get content okay. about agriculture. Anything to do with farming. Okay. You get very good material from Aishamba. Okay. You get small videos. Mm -hmm. If you type in something like, uh, let's say, vegetables, mm -hmm. it will come there. Oh, thank you. Then you see how to plant your vegetables. Okay. It tells you when to apply fertilizer, okay. how long you should apply. Okay. It has all the information that you need about okay. agriculture. Okay, thank you. What do you think of that? I have seen before we were behind everything. Yes. But now, mm -hmm. We are open. Now you'll be Our okay. eyes are open. So what, all you need to do, you'll charge it. Okay. Then you have any question, you okay. go to the app. There's an app there of mm -hmm. iShamba. Okay. It's got all the videos. Okay. And there's also some videos from Shamba Shape Up. Okay. If you're lucky, you'll be able to see me. Oh. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> yes, you might see me there. <laughs> you are inside. So it's a, it's a gift uh -huh. that you're giving you so that you keep advancing your farming. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. Now go show mom that nice video that's oh. there. Okay. Yes, Let all me right. show her. You can get your very own farmer phone at the Mkopa shops in Eldoret, Kitale, Machakos, Kakamega and Bungoma and pay it off in installments. The farmer phone comes with an iShamba premium membership, Shamba Shepa videos and an e-voucher if you pay the first 60 days of your installments in a row. If you'd like more information on Mkopa phone, get in touch with iShamba. I'm happy and it will help me and I'm happy because I know many things and uh, where I, wherever I have problem I will be going to Aishamba and I will be knowing the mistakes and I will be collecting myself with my mom so I will know more. Well Karo, our work here is done. And we'll see you in the so next let's go. Bye Elizabeth. Bye bye. What's bye, going bye. on? Bye <laughs> bye. Hey, you are leaving me. Let's lock the gate. Yeah, let's lock the gate. <laughs> Okay, no. okay, see you. Bye. Bye. Okay, bye. 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 B